Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I know I had quite a bit of interest with uh, the pen I posted this morning. Uh, and especially with uh, the flame anodizing uh, or, f or flaming of the titanium. So I thought I'd do a video. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Um, I've kind of got a little bit of a head start. So this is one of my pen blanks. Um, already machined and a uh, little bit of sanding done to it already to kind of get the machining marks out of it. Uh, but it needs to be polished uh, first before it gets uh, flame anodized. So uh, just helps bring out the colors a little bit, gives it a little more, more depth uh, to the colors, and then uh, obviously looks a lot better. So I uh, thought we'd start here. I got a little kind of makeshift rig set up with my drill, and I have a special arbor that I made for the blanks, at least this specific size blank, um, so I can spin it and buff it at the same time. So, I'll get it started here. And I basically use a Dremel tool with a buffing wheel. Um, I've got two compounds that I use. One's an emery, and then another is a uh, kind of a medium rouge. You can kind of see I've started it uh, here already. Um, this is kind of where I left off uh, a couple days ago. Uh, my battery died on my Dremel tool, so. But basically, I go over the entire thing. And even after the emery, uh, it does a really good job. be step one. Wipe off the residue. You can see right there it already looks really really good. Polished titanium has a really interesting look to it. It's not quite the same as polished stainless. A little bit almost of a darker silver color. Switch wheels here. This one I don't have to quite spend as much time on it.
pretty much it. So that's pretty much the polishing step. Then next I take it off the arbor because I don't want to heat it up. Um, I'm going to pause the video quick, get this set up with my heating rig, and then I will film that. Okay, I'm back. So I just got a brand new torch here. so. It's going to be a learning experience for both of us. <laughs> uh, so basically I got a rod uh, hooked up in my drill uh, with the blank on it. Pre-polished, ready to go. Um, I did not touch it. Um, oils on your hands can obviously affect how this torches. So uh, it needs to be extremely clean. And right after buffing from the buffing compound, it pretty much is as clean as it's going to get. So, start it up, get it spinning, and basically that just helps me get a more even color all the way around. Kind of find a nice balance so it spins good. And with this particular design, I kind of start in the middle because of the bead, it's kind of the focal point. And hopefully the camera picks this up, but... does change very quickly, so you got to kind of have a plan of what colors you want it to be. kind of goes from a gold, bronzy gold color, to a purple. And now it changes from purple to blue very fast. So typically I will kind of let this sit for a minute. Um, I'll even hit it with a little compressed air, kind of cool it off. Um, but we can kind of do the rest of it here, I think. And then I'll start from the ends and work my way back to get another color. And I heat all of it initially. And hold it at one end. And start moving the colors towards the middle. And then if I need to touch up anything, it's pretty hard to do without affecting the rest of it. But if I wanted to end a little bit more white, I can hold it right at the end. It 
does change very quickly. Um, and it'll go from kind of this blue to a very light blue, almost chromish, and then it'll change to kind of a green. Um, so if you like that color. Get this a little more purple. got a little purple left in it but that's basically it so now stop this from moving hopefully you guys can see that uh, obviously it's extremely hot right now uh, but that's pretty much how it's done um, I've never really gone past the whitish uh, with a little bit of green um, so I don't even know what it would go I think it pretty much starts turning to brown after that point um, but pretty much everybody likes these colors anyway so that's pretty much it uh, and just one thing of note to uh, the flame titanium is notorious for fingerprints um, Basically, the colors you're seeing is how the light is reflected off of it, and the oils in your hands will uh, dull the color, uh, not permanently, um, but dulls it to, doesn't take the color away, but it, does, it just doesn't look as vibrant. Um, but a little bit of Windex and a soft cloth brings it right back. I do coat uh, these and I make some copper pens as well in Renwax. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Renwax. Um, uh, I imagine some of you are. Uh, that does help with the fingerprint issue, but it's kind of just a fact of, of if you want these colors, that's the price you gotta pay kind of thing. Um, there isn't anything out there that would seal it and preserve the color at the same time without it so you don't get the fingerprints uh, any kind of coating other than Renwax that I've found uh, pretty much dulls the colors just like a fingerprint would poly um, lacquer uh, water-based finishes they all do that unfortunately it's it's just the, the way the light reflects the colors that it's reflecting it it's just the way it is but hopefully you guys enjoyed it and uh have a nice day